Uh, so I started recording. So um, unfortunately, Laurent, Laurent has to be somewhere. So uh, um, we have to uh, uh, record this and then send it to, to him later. Mm -hmm. I will share the screen like this. So now we see you, not not the. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so in the last class, I have introduced some operations on games, uh, and these are. Uh, uh, two uh, two versions of or. So this. Yeah, so do, do we need to repeat repeat the definitions of, of this class of games and and the operations, or, or every everyone was last time and uh, remembers what is. No. So I I can repeat on demand. Just, just say some some. Uh, say so some. Uh, this is the game where we play two games A and B and parallel, and we machine uh, need to win at least one of them, A or B. Uh, this is uh, another uh, sort of um, or. Here we need to choose one of, of the games A, A and B and win it. And these are dual operations, A uh, and B. This is called parallel end, and this is called choice end. Okay, Here we play. Let, let me then ask the participants. For example, this, there are two versions of OR. Let's make a vote. Which one is easier? So, uh, the first one is easier. Can you hear me? Yeah, we mm -hmm. can hear you, but yeah. why? That's the, the, with the V, not with the, uh, uh, because you, you can postpone the, uh, top until any point to choose which game you want to win. Mm -hmm. So if you if you know that you can win A, you can just in the first, uh, you can do arbitrary move in B and just play correctly A. Yeah. Yeah. And let somebody else ask, tell us which of these two con conjunction game is easier. Uh, and say they the same because environment can guess what is harder for us. So, so which which is easier? This uh, this conjunction, uh, I think they are the same. Uh, with conjunction, they are the same. In the sense, they are the same. In the sense, if we can win one of them, we can win also the other one. If we have a computable yes. strategy to win one of them. Ah. But can you effectively transform the strategies? Uh, uh, well, if we can win uh, a boss uh, of them in uh, parallel, then when we give, uh, we are given a choice which one to play, we assume that environment ah, so makes can, arbitrary can... move, moves in the other. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to play uh, bo con conjunction, we uh, imagine that we are playing two games of the second version of conjunction. Ah. Uh, so, 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 uh, well, is it, so, so it's so strange that for this junction they are looking more different than for, than for conjunction. It's really the case? No, no. no? Uh, they okay. are completely Sorry. dual. So it, it should be that, uh, so th we have also the negation, which is just, swapping roles between machine yeah. and environment between two players and there should be that uh the negation of a or b is the same in a sense that negation a and negation b and the same should be true for all their four operations like yeah but on the other hand if two Two of them are uh, equal, equally difficult uh, for one player. Maybe they are not equally difficult for the other. Uh, not there so is some, some mistake in 
Misha's argument, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it should be that probably. Uh, let's see. So the definition of dual means uh, negation. The, the, uh, you flip the players. So uh, uh, the duality yeah. means the following exactly. It's the Morgan rule. Sorry. The, yeah, the Morgan, the Morgan rules. Right. rules. Okay. Okay. And so one of the two games uh, shouldn't shouldn't be uniformly winnable. I mean, either this one. Uh, sorry. Just for variables, I mean, for 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 some some uh, some games, either this one or this one. I guess this is not winnable, the first one. Uh, or the second one. Now let's see. Misha, uh, 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 can you win both these games for any A and B? Uh, okay, so the, uh, for the first is uh, first is negation of the first conjunction. Uh, uh, yeah. So he, here the opponent, I mean the environment has has to choose one of these. Uh, and, and here you have to choose. I guess that this is uh, not winnable. So you are you have an opponent, and you can force the opponent to 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 win with, to win uh, any of the games against you. But you, on the other hand, should win both games during the opponent. So you, you somehow you have a procedure which you can call uh, f with any parameters, but only only with one value of parameter, and uh, you need it for two values of the parameter. So th does it make sense, or or it's just some nonsense? I guess that uh, Misha can't win this one because to win this one, he has to win either both of these or this one. But to win this one, he needs to make a choice between uh, yes. uh, not A or not B. But he has any idea which to choose because until the game is finished. Uh, Misha doesn't know uh, which to choose. But what is what is right that if we have, for example, a computable strategy which wins the game A uh, and B in the second version, then having the computable strategy, we can call it twice in parallel and win the game A and B. So. Yeah. That yes, for computable. That... Uh, yeah. yeah, for uh, I mean for compute, they look same for computable strategy. You, in uh, the okay, case of so, computable no, strategy this, for this, one uh, can be translated into a computer strategy for other, but still, uh, uh, yes. The, so this is easier and this is harder for us for the yeah. machine. Does it make sense? Somehow, so so we we we, uh, we we want to understand easier and harder in some special sense that this disjunction is is winnable. So the the, the, the real real uh, um, so if, if you for example understand easier. In the sense that there is a kind of Medvedev reduction 
of the problem of winning one to the problem of winning other, I think Misha is right. So they are equivalent in, in Medvedev sense. Uh, yes, but we will understand it in the following sense. If we have some gay uh, uh, A and B, we say that A is, is B, A reduces, uh, not Turing, just reduces to B. If we can win, by definition, if we can win the negation of uh, B or A. We, we may comp uniformly win. There is a computable strategy to win ah. such a game. Uh, mm -hmm. mm, uh, for any games A and B. So a, a formula, say, a formula A is easier than a formula B if there is a uniform way to, to win this game. Mm -hmm. And in this sense, uh, this uh, reduces to this, but no, not the other way around. And on the other hand, uh, this reduces to this, but not the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is a kind of kind of definition between uh, of 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 of, of But but this it's reduction is is not the main reduction we need. We will define uh, an analog of a Turing reduction as follows. We say that a uh, we call it implication. Yeah. The implication from a to b is just a shortcut for. Uh, no, for the reduction to, to, to compare with the reduction, just say implication of B to A. So, so it will be okay, B similar to, a. to that. To okay, a. okay, let's write B to A. No, uh, I have to, 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 to clear this. On the screen. B to A, okay. So B implies A is a game which is uh, not B, and B can be used infinitely many times, so to say, like that. No, and A. Uh, and so using these operations, we may define a uh, reduction between computable, uh, between algorithmic problem. So, and uh, the problem reduce, uh, say, A to B uh, is also an algorithmic problem, which is uh, this one, if we, if, we, if we speak about Turing reduction. Uh, uh, and now I want to compare this with Medvedev's approach. Uh, sorry, you can use B infinitely often. What does it mean? Say it again. So you say B exclamation mark. And you said it means that you can use B infinitely often. Not infinitely often. This is just <coughs> copies. So you can have so exclamation any, any, B any is... number of opponents which play B against you. B, and you need B, to win B. against only one of them. But you, you uh, need to win only one of them I, or A even. So if the sorry, opponent... but now you is B and B and B and B. You're right. It's a mistake. Hmm? It's like that, Bruno. Ah, okay. Um, so... but, but why is winning against several copies easier? I mean, they can decide to play all the same strategy. The opponent, yeah, but you you can. Uh, you can you can make uh, different moves. Different options. So you different know what, okay, what yeah. the opponent should answer for this or that. Yeah. Okay. For yeah, example, yeah. if uh, this is uh, the problem to decide a certain set, and this is the problem to decide another set, you can ask your opponent whether uh, different strings belong to that set, and if the opponent makes an error, then you win automatically and if all the opponents answer yeah. are correct 
you need to win A there to produce a correct answer. Okay. This is exactly Turing reduction. Yeah. And uh, so what's the difference between Medvedev's approach? Medvedev also has defined uh, a general notion of an algorithm problem. And according to Medvedev, Medvedev, a problem is uh, to enumerate uh, a set in a certain family of sets. So, uh, or there is equivalent approach to compute a function from a certain family of function, but let's stick to uh, enumeration problem. So we have some family F of family of subsets. of n, uh, and uh, every such family is identified uh, with uh, uh, an algorithm problem. So informal algorithm problem is a problem of constructing an algorithm that enumerates a set, enumerate a set in F. For example, we can consider uh, the set uh, consisting of a single, a family consisting, consisting of a single uh, mm, uh, set, which is a graph of a function, then uh, it can be understood this problem as a problem of computing that function uh, and so on. Or uh, F might be a family of consistent of graphs of several functions, then the problem becomes a problem to compute uh, a function from that family and so on. Now for, uh, for Medvedev, one can also define uh, uh, some version of OR and AND, but uh, now we will be interested only in implication. So assume that we have F and G and we want to define F implies G. This uh, must be also a, mm, a family of subsets of N. So Sasha, how would you define this? You, you, using the so-called Svadimist uh, no, we'll to, to, find, uh, uh, to find some enumeration operator which reduces uh, uh, G to F. And enumeration operator is a, a set of instructions, and each instruction is of the of the form. If you see this, 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 and this in F, then add this to G. So is so, it clear to everybody? No, you don't le let me to write, so I cannot write anything. Ah, you sorry. Write it for me. No, actually, I guess you can write. Okay, but just send me the message to the board. Uh, uh wait wait because anyone with the link can uh anyone with yeah, the link okay. can write but then uh -huh, uh -huh, okay the... okay copy link copy link and then send done uh -huh. Okay. okay, now let you me, see the let link. Let me try. And I should, yeah, it's page eight. Yeah. No, so uh, enumerate, so what is an, an operator? Uh, so you have some, mm, so what is an inst instruction? Is a mm, pair. One is a finite set of elements F, F1, Fn, and another is some G. And it, this instruction is informally understood that if you see, so uh, a set of instruction defines of a mappings from sets to sets. And uh, uh, it, it maps some set, let, let's call it F, to some set the G, which is, uh, uh, I don't know, alpha of F. 
and how it works. Uh, alpha of f uh, is, is, is obtained like this. Each instruction is applied to f and if you it's an, a read as if you see f1 fn in f add g to g. So we have a family of instructions and then we apply all the instructions uh, to our set f. And uh, so every set of instructions okay maybe I should not use f and g here is a mapping mapping on on on, on sets and it needs to be monotone mapping so uh, subsets are mapped to subsets yeah it's automatically some subsets are mapped to sub subsets it's true yeah monotone automatically we don't need to require anything yeah it's 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 monotone yeah and then uh, uh, f of g consists f implication v g consists of all instruction sets that map uh, all elements of f into some element of g for example if f and g consists both of only one set single set then this is a set of all instruction sets that map the first set to the second one uh, so so to say it's the problem to reduce one set to the to another one but the, the, there is indeed a problem with mon not the problem but the the uh, special uh, situation with monotonicity so for example is if, if f is 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 so if we apply any instruction uh, set to any f and apply it to a bigger f we get a bigger set so uh and if if, 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 if so it can create a problem if g, we should take special care if, if g is not monotonic then, then then we really should apply uh, our, our, our only to maximal elements of f Mm. So to minimal elements of f. Oh no 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 okay okay. I don't, sorry I don't sorry sorry but but this is actually a problem. The, Bruno has some. It's somehow is we need to think about this. How it's a bit counterintuitive that uh, all operators are monotonic. So if we have sets f and g, we want to find the monotonic mapping which maps all elements of f to all elements of g. No, to some element to all. Every element should be mapped to some element. To some element of G. And there is no problem that they are always monotonic. And that's no, not a problem, I guess. No, our mapping are always monotonic. That's true. Mm -hmm. But, and no, formally there is no problem. Every element of F should be mapped to every element of G by a monotonic operator. But this is quite possible for some F and G. So. Uh, and so now we can cons we can uh, we can compare two approaches. Uh, to compare them, we need to consider four games only games of the form enumerate a set, and we can then compare the game enumerate a. Well, let's consider just single set enumerate a, a enumerate. A implies enumerate B, and this is the game. And the second game is uh, uh, it's, it's not a game; it's a mediative problem. A oh, implies no, no, no. so it's 
so, so enumerate of A is, 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 is so, so let, let's be more specific. So A and B are just sets. Ah, just set, just, just singletons, just set, right. Sets. And then we have Medvedev problem enumerate A and Medvedev problem enumerate B. Mm -hmm. and, and we then, have the problem. we have a Medvedev problem uh, enumerate A implies enumerate B. Mm -hmm. This Medvedev problem asks us to enumerate a set of instructions which being applied to any enumeration of A, uh, be, being applied to A, produce B. Mm -hmm. So on the on the on the top line, it's all Medvedev problems. Yeah. No, this is a Medvedev problem. This is a game, and uh, and here we need to. Uh, I mean, this is a static game. Static game. Oh, we, so the first line is about games. Yeah, this is game. The first line, and this and is what a is this problem. game? Just you. There is no opponent, and you should enumerate a. Yeah. Uh, no, there is an opponent. The opponent enumerates a, and you need to enumerate b. No, no. This, this is implication. No, no. Sorry. This is implication between two games. Or, mm -hmm. or just a new, a, a, a single game defined. No, so, so so for every set A, there is a game enumerate A. Yes. And if you have these two games, and in this game, uh, you need just to enumerate a. Uh, the set A without uh, any mean, opponent. Ah. Uh? Without any opponent. Without any opponent, right? And then <laughs> there is an enumerate B. Yes. And, and then you but, consider the the, the implication as defined from for games or not yes this implication is defined for game games and this is a game uh when you, you have to, to enumerate a b you need to uh we need to enumerate b assuming that the opponent enumerates a even infinitely many times but oh, even infinitely matter. many that times but here much because... many, it doesn't matter yeah. because the opponent can use the same Enumeration in all different, yeah. uh, on all, all different boards in all different place. Here it doesn't matter that infinitely many. This doesn't help us to win this game. Yeah. Okay. So at, in the bot, in the top line, we have a game, mm -hmm. and, and in here the we line, have a Medvedev problem. We have a Medvedev problem, so it's uh, a first, problem. first we need to understand that this for any particular A and B, this is winnable in a computable way, if and only if this is winnable. And this has a computable element. Mm -hmm. This has a computable element, if and only if there is a computable strategy to win this one. So in a sense, they are equivalent, in a sense. Existence of a winnable uh, of computable strategy to win this game is equivalent to existence of a winnable strategy to win this one. All right? Yeah. So, is it clear to anyone, Misha? Do, do we have Sasha Kazachinsky, by the way? No, he's in Chile now, and he he's probably in now. Chile, now, no, no. It's. It, I hope he will. He will join us. Uh, in, uh, but but he's now uh, okay. In... Then we can find me, f ask Misha Dikterov then. <laughs> okay, uh, we need some victim. Make... Yeah, the next Three. one is on the line is, is is Bruno Bowens, I guess he should prepare for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so if understand. Okay, so the first if uh, Medvedev uh, problem has uh, computable element, yeah, then we. Take this computable element and generate instructions. instructions. Yeah, yeah. So generate instructions. Generate instructions, and as soon as uh, opponent uh, uh, gives us elements from A that satisfy some instruction, instruction, we add this element to B. Uh, and uh, if opponent enumerates A correctly, then we will enumerate B. Uh, yeah, uh, this is an explanation. If Medvedev problem has a computable solution, then uh, our game has a computable strategy. 
yes yes other uh, and uh, other direction we have a computable strategy and we start uh, imagine that opponent uh, just gives us uh, all possible uh, enum uh, enumerations like we start st st uh, start uh, given our strategy all one element sets all two element sets and so on and as soon as our computable strategy outputs any element uh, we say we add such instruction uh, uh, so if we see that uh, after our opponents add some elements and before he adds anything else our strategy emits some elements we in, 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 in interpret this as an instruction yes yeah mm, okay okay very good but, but we need to check that this will be a, a full it will be indeed uh apply informally yeah this is uh, harder than this one in the following sense so here to win this we need so to say to publish a manual so the, uh how how to win this one uh the manual how to win this game and here we don't need to publish the manual how to win this one this game we just need uh, to demonstrate that we can win so this is quite informal so here we need to uh, publish a manual how to win this game yeah and here we need just to win and that's the difference but and for computability a computable possibility to win one thing first thing is equivalent to publishing a computable manual for the second thing yes but right. just playing something is maybe easier than explaining what are you doing and, and that difference uh can be mm, 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 is important when we consider nest implication and here i will give a very interesting uh, example provided by andrei muchnik uh, uh, and example in that example he recalled uh, a very uh, i mean an unknown uh theorem of his father of muchnik senior and the theorem of muchnik senior albert muchnik is the following one assume that we have two disjoint enumerable set and assume that the problem and also we have a, a third set r and assume that the problem of enumerating r is reducible so medvedev to... problem or game oh just forget about uh, uh medvedev's problem forget about games because in his paper we, he didn't use any of these uh, uh notions assume yeah. that in a uh, how to say uh, in a usual sense the problem of enumerating r is turing reducible to the problem of separating of s and t and here we of course we need to specify what means turing reduction between these two uh, guys uh, for example in medvedev sense so there is a machine more or less which uh gives is it or a, a, a turing machine uh that with any oracle that separates s and t enumerates r in that sense yeah then this implies that actually r is enumerable computably enumerable I didn't uh, hear, uh, hear. I didn't. I have not heard about this theorem before. 
Andrei told me about that. So it's it, it's not in any of the computer uh, textbook about recursion theory. So if separator uh, problem allows us to enumerate something, then it's it's not needed at all. Uh, and here it's important that S and T are uh, enumer enumerable. Yeah, yeah. Of course, otherwise we just take S and T complementary and then separation is just computing. Uh, yeah, right. So, uh, right. And, uh, and, uh, so, and, and why is this? Uh, so let's this... prove the theorem, yeah? Uh, we will prove the theorem now. Yeah, maybe someone but... can prove the theorem. For example, Bruno. Uh, can maybe prove the theorem. Uh, sorry, I, I um, so there is so a, the statement is that if you you have two enumerable set S and T, yeah, and yeah. you know that any mach, there is a machine which can be used can use any oracle separating S and T to enumerate some fixed set R. Yeah, yeah but a fixed machine for every fixed oracle. Machine. One is one machine for every oracle. Yeah, and then uh, we don't. Uh, no, need no, no, the there machine one machine. depend on the oracle. There is one machine that works for every oracle. Yeah. Right. And then you don't need the oracle. Ah, and then okay. we don't need the oracle. Why? We need the oracle. No, no. The, the theorem says that then we can enumerate R R without any oracle. Ah, right, right. This is the conclusion, mm -hmm. and the assumption is that whatever we so, so we have some S and T. And so you say Oracle separates S and T. That means for you every Oracle, S. there exists you have a T. that can separate S and T. No, 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 no. Just Oracle is a set which separates S and T. So there are many Oracles. Ah, okay. And our machine uh, can use any of them to uh, en uh, enumerate R. And then you need to show that you can enumerate R without any oracle, I guess. Uh, I don't know how I can prove it. Uh, of course, you don't know. Uh, I mean, you haven't heard it before. No. But you can, uh, you can. Well, let, let's start thinking. Find the proof just now. So, okay. So, so let's start. I, I also don't remember how to do it, but let's start thinking. So. We, we can enumerate S and T. Uh, sure. So we have some partial information about our Oracle. So Oracle should be uh, plus somewhere and minus somewhere else. So the Oracle should contain some numbers and should not contain some number, numbers. Uh, yeah. And maybe this is enough, this information is enough to generate some element of R. So there is a computation with the oracle, which use only only the information about S and T to generate some element of R. Then we can generate R without S and T, at least some part of R. So just just simulate the machine, and if it happens somehow that all the answers yeah. are known then we can trust and use this run. So in this way, we can enumerate some part of R. But then is it, is it enough or not? I guess not, but uh, let's think. I actually didn't understand. In which case you will, uh, what will be the proof that some element X belongs to R? A computation right. of, of enumeration, but this, or this enumerating machine, computation of this machine, uh, uh, when and that but ask something about the separator, mm -hmm. and all the required answer of, of for the separator are just guaranteed by the enumeration of S and the enumeration of T. So we we can enumerate S and T. So we know some positive and some negative. Ah, of course, it's enough. But yeah, it, it, it's enough. 
but it, it it doesn't suffice, right? Yeah, you also need to check. So, so you enumerate S and T long enough so that um, the answer does not depend uh, on all the elements that you don't know yet. So you can yeah. right. Yeah, right. Yeah. This so is better. This, this is kind. This is kind of a. This is kind of. A, uh, uh, in this way, we enumerate some part of R, uh, but not, not the entire R. For example, the Oracle machine can start with asking for some element which is not an S and not in T, for some, some non-important element. And then the machine may ignore the answer, but still mm -hmm. it was asked. And so for this element, we never know uh, 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 what, 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 what will happen. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so uh, this is not enough to enumerate R, and so we need to make a next attempt at improving an enumerating algorithm. So what is the improvement, Bruno? You tell, you say something. I, I didn't already. get, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, okay, so for each element uh, that may or may not be an R, how can we know whether it's an R? So we enumerate ST to a certain point, yeah. and then there are points, uh, um, uh, and and then we we uh, uh, there are th it may happen that there are some uh, uh, undetermined element yeah, we don't yeah. know whether they are in, in the oracle but it turns out that for yeah. all values of this element whatever they are our yeah. machine enumerates r uh, enumerates some element yeah yeah then we can safely add this element because. Uh, there are some information which is guaranteed by S and T, and some information which is not guaranteed. But it's for us, uh, uh, any, any values are are okay. Yes, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, you need to only specify uh, one thing. So, what does it mean that for any choices of these black elements, you enumerate X? Well, the computation of the oracle uh, right. just uses uses these answers and and and, and uh, uh, uses this uh, answer and not uh, nothing else. I nothing mean, else, yeah. of course. Yeah, d d does not use uh, any of the white cells. Here yeah, yeah. It can group. use pluses, minuses, and these mm -hmm. uh, uh, cells which are chosen as undetermined ones. Yeah, but mm -hmm. there is a problem because it can happen that. Um, for some, imagine that if it's all ones, the machine decides to read further. So yeah. imagine that all blue squares are ones, then the machine can say, oh, I want to know more about um, the oracle. Then, then you can't enumerate X, of course. The machine should stop, hold. Yeah, but also this is all, ah, yeah. all, all, blue okay, yeah. all, all blue squares can be one for a real separator. Yeah, okay, but so it's not machine... a problem because the set of separating sets is compact set and only depends on... Yeah. So here we will use it, the set of separator, mm -hmm. separators is compact. And if a compact is covered by open sets, that, that cover is always finite. Yeah, so, so yeah, there, no, there, no. there is some vague uh, reference to compactness, which should me magically solve all our problems. Mm -hmm. No, no. Why is the set of separators compact? Because it's defined using the universal quantifier. That means that for all S in S, for all T and T, something. No, and this something is open. There, there is intersection open and closed, closed set, uh, which means that we we need to produce a correct answer here. It's a closed set, and we need to produce a correct answer there. It's another closed set, and so we have infinitely many closed sets, and we intersect them, and this is the set mm -hmm. of all separators. The the set of all separators is a closed set. And hence, it is a compact set. Okay. It's a closed set in the counter space, which is compact, mm -hmm. so it's a compact mm -hmm. set. And then mm -hmm. if, if we look at, there are some open set of the type that uh, what is needed 
to, to, to enumerate x in r. What are the, the, the answers of the oracle which uh, lead to, to appearance of x in the output? So there are many, many, many possibilities. There are ma many possible answers uh, that lead to, to, to appearance of x in r. So a, a, any, a, any, any computation like this is an open set, uh, defines an open set of oracles which leads to, to appearance of x in r. Okay. And so these open, uh, open sets are uh, covering this compact set. So there are finitely many of them. And this finitely many use finitely many t questions. And so whatever the, are the answers for these questions, we will get some, uh, we will enumerate x in r. Okay, I, I, so Misha, is it clear or not? Okay, let me try to repeat it. Okay, yeah. so we, def, uh, separ we define a separator as a string in a counter space. A sequence, infinite sequence, yeah. It's Hello, there is some connection loss, or it's me who, who does not matter what one in such set is uh, closed. Uh, thus compact. Now we, for every separator, we uh, run uh, our enumeration and look at which positions of in strings uh, uh, it uh, looks. And then have somehow make from this an, uh, 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 okay, and th this is where I get lost because uh, there should be some open cover, but uh, I, I don't understand how we get any open set from machine or from what, where do we get them? No, Misha, for any, for any, uh, so fix uh, uh, X, some X, then we know that for any separator of S and T, the machine somehow asking our separator produces x right mm -hmm. <clears throat> when it uh, produces x, uh, it asks x stops, finitely many questions get some finite information about x about s and about the oracle not about the oracle finite information let's yeah. let's write it as a finitely uh, how to say open uh, uh, open and closed set that information so that means that for any uh, set which has the same information uh, the machine will produce x right uh, so, you, yes but uh, it uh, uh, so for any separator y we have some uh, some open set omega say uh, c c y a closed okay. set which means that it is closed and open at the same time okay so so th this says that for any separator for any specific x uh we uh, only some finite number of positions are, are important yeah right for any specific x uh, the, the set of all separators is covered by open sets. Mm -hmm. So there is a finite cover. Mm -hmm. And then, so, so we can just, uh, this finite cover use only finitely many answers. So for whatever is, fin finitely many places in the oracle. So whatever is, uh, this is, the fact that it's a cover means that whatever is in this, these places in the oracle our uh, uh, machine will emit X. Then we take this information mm -hmm. yeah. and pu put it here. All pluses means that uh, those answers are positive. 
all minuses are that the, the, that is negative outside the set. Uh, I mean, these are answers in S, these are answers T, and these guys are uh, answers mm -hmm. from uh, outside the arbitrary. S and T. And these should have the property that whatever we put here, the string X will be uh, emitted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all oracles covered uh, uh, by. Uh, okay, so so we uh, we can now find uh, for any given x, we can find finite number of separators such that uh, uh, any any other separator gives us the same answers as one of our set. I, I would say not a finite number of separators, but some finite number of informations about separator, so yes, that any separated consistent with one of those informations uh, uh, forces our machine also to, to emit X. Mm -hmm. uh, And so we can create uh, enumerate R without any separators at all. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say then is that if we uh, consider the uh, uniform way, uh, uniform version of Muchnik theorem using using uh, using Medvedev lattice, Medvedev's implication. Let's write it with two bars to make the difference between games and Medvedev problems. We obtain the following theorem, also Muchnik, call it Muchnik theorem, which reads as follows. Uh, if a num uh, implication from mm, from what? Oh, so you skipped page 10 and write on page 11. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 that's completely okay. That's okay. Okay, uh, oh, okay. okay. Sep ST. Implies enum R. In the Medvedev sense. So here we uh, uh, we consider the set of all uh, graphs of functions separating S and T. Yeah. So we, of course we, we 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 need not separate, not enumerate some separator. We need to. It's it's, it's trivial because S is one. But we need just to enumerate a graph of a total function which is a characteristic function of a separator right so this is come this is computable this is the uniform version uniform version of muchnik's theorem and uh, there, uh, i mean the proof we figured out uh, suffices to prove this theorem actually because it's sort of uniform so if we have a machine transforming this to this, then using that machine, we can just enumerate R. And in the way he had done it. All right? Yeah, it seems quite quite uniform because if we have this enumeration for, 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 for re uh, reductions, if, if we enumerate some reduction, we just use this enumeration to find the cases when it should blah, blah, blah. And, and then we, 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 we find the enumeration of R based on this. So the original version of Muchnik theorem says that if this is computable, then this is computable. But now we have uh, also this without any assumption that this is computable. And the interesting point is that for games, it is not true. On the other hand, the, 
there are s and t enumerable such that the game the corresponding game can't be won and r also uh, r is not enumerable actually r is also enumerable but it doesn't matter no, if it's not an if R is a numeral, how can R? Uh, uh... No, R is not a numerable. Sorry. If it is a numerable, we, we can win it. Yeah. Right. Is not computably winnable. Yeah, so why? So we, 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 we... So, so, and to, uh, to prove this, we need to understand the difference between this and this, uh, this game and this one. Here, mm, mm, why can't we use the same idea? Because uh, here, uh, to be in this one, uh, we need to be able to separate S and T. If we, we are unable to do that, we can't use our ability to reduce this one to this one to this one. Because uh, to win this game means to enumerate R, assuming that the opponent uh, uh, wins this one. Uh, but uh, looking at the opponent moves uh, when he wins this one, we uh, are able to extract some useful information only in the case that we ourselves can win this one. So you want to say that this is trivial because if, let's consider S and T that are, are not separable. Yes, S and T are not separable. separable. And then uh, our opponent, uh, it's, it's an easy way to, to, to win the, the, the game in, in th th this game just by doing nothing we know that our opponent uh, has to be computable actually the opponent uh, no, uh, uh, has to do something he has to ask us to win this one for all natural numbers starting from zero he asks to win us this for all ends and he has, uh, and he knows actually the opponent that we can't win it because they are inseparable. So that means that the opponent has, uh, uh, can win this one. And so he can win the entire this without more or less doing anything. And if we just take R uh, not enumerable, then we lose also this one because we can't win this one either. So we uh, lose this one and the opponent wins this one. And so, so if S and T are not, not separable and mm -hmm. R is not enumerable, then mm -hmm. the opponent can, uh, we cannot have a computable strategy because again, this computable strategy, the opponent may use just a, a kind of uh, uh, ignorance strategy whatever whatever uh, he doesn't do anything he doesn't enumerate anything just uh, relying on the fact that we cannot separate s and t so he, he doesn't care at all and still it, still in this way he wins all these games and since r is not enumerable r uh, are not enumerable mm -hmm. all right sorry yeah, since since uh, R is not enumerable, this this uh, abstraction strategy for the opponent part uh, is good against our computable strategies. So there is a strategy of the opponent which 
in fact also computable, which is good against all our computable strategies. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is not not not. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, Medvedev's approach is better because for nested implications, we can we we have an example which is uniformly reputable, but in the game approach it is not. No, I I, I won't say it's better or or or, or worse. in a sense better. It's, it's different. It's different, right? Uh, okay, that's sort of finishes uh, my the first part of my talk yeah. about. Yeah. About compare about comparison between Medvedev's approach and uh, Blas and Japarid's approach. Yeah. Uh, now I, uh, uh, I I I can also present three different ways uh, for defining uh, the implication. So the first one. The first one is by Blas. So Blas, uh, uh, I mean, there are three ways to define what so means. All three ways deal with static games, not with Medvedev problems. With static games, right. Yeah. There are three ways to define what means this one. So uh, there is Blas, there is Dreparidze. Yeah. And there is uh, measure of Verishagin. Yeah. So this uh, 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 measure of Verishagin is what I have explained already. We have infinite number of games, all the initial, all in the initial position at the beginning. initial position. Uh, plus, we have only one board for A, but we can use coping operation. That means we can just uh, one game in, in the initial position, say P0, and then we can copy. We can play and then again copy and so on. So for example, we can make two copies of the initial position, then change this to some play this, and then again we obtain uh, one game in position P1, P0, and then we can again copy and so. No, so I'm lost about the theory of initial positions. So why, what what does it mean? Why we allow any initial positions? Not any. For every game, the initial position is just the empty sequence. No moves done. And uh, we have infinite number of games oh, so in so the initial. Ah, oh, they are there are in the initial position, not uh, in the initial position, right? Yeah. So it's just definition as we had as yes. before. So now you define uh, different in interpretation of this uh, exclamation mark a, yeah. Mm -hmm. And here uh, in Blas definition, which is called. Uh, mm, branching recurrence. The opponent, instead of creating infinite number of initial positions, can copy any position which was already obtained in some of the games. Uh, so trying to make different moves, say, in different positions. So the, 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 the opponent has possibility to copy one board to another board, to a new board. So the game may proceed as follows. Initial position, P0, then two initial positions. Then may, we play some, um, make some moves on this board. We obtain, say, P1, P0. Then we can make P... Uh, one p zero say p one and so on and so uh, in, in a sense uh, we branch 
So here is the initial position. Here is uh, P1. Here we can place something P2. Then we can copy this into P2, P1, P1, place something here, P3, P1, and so on. So we obtain a, a tree of positions. So uh, 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 and each branch in that tree corresponds a play. Is it clear or not? It's not clear why it's more powerful than. than no, the first for, first of all, we should. It's, it's even not asked. So if the definition is clear, then the, the, we can ask which of these two, two games is the more difficult. But is definition clear? Um, but I, I'm again confused about the previous definition and measure of Vedashali. So uh, Okay, what's your confusion? Yeah. So uh, why uh, is it different from the original game? So you win in the conjunction of games, why is it harder than winning just in one game? Uh, uh, of course, we can. There is a computable strategy to win this game, if and only if there is a computable uh, strategy to win a single play. You are yes. right. In that yes. sense, they, this is equivalent. However, there is no uniform way to win this game. Yeah, yeah, for negation, it, it's different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I can say it like this. So imagine the game is to guess something probabilistically, and you can win it with probability one half. Then uh, A can be won with probability one half, but this infinite number of copies, uh, there is a zero probability of winning because you may need to make a correct guess uh, infinitely many times in different places. Okay. Um, okay, then, then the uh, I, I think I understand the branching, the definition of the branching game. So, which is more difficult? Both, I understand. So you just play no, no, a game no. And which of these two games is more difficult to win? In intuitively, um, well, the second one is more well. Uh, so, so are, are you allowed to to branch countably infinitely many times? Yeah. Then the, the then blast game is harder. This one is harder. Of yeah, course. if you just look to the definition. Uh, and this one is harder because we can emulate measurers uh, yeah. exploration mark just by copying, keeping also the always the initial position. The tree will be like that. Ah, oh, okay. We still can have binary trees because we can keep, uh, yeah, branching. We course. can yeah. use so this will be the first play, this will be the second play, and so on. Yeah. This is the first, third play, and so on. But you cannot win uh, uh, in, in the other direction. Uh, why? Why you cannot use the the the, the uh, measure of solution? With blast solution, because op opponents, uh, uh, opponent can uh, uh, win and can make different games. moves in different copies, uh, and then here you can copy, including opponents' moves. Yeah. So he here we here we can try both, uh, uh, both things. Uh, uh, so. Uh, so, uh, the other way around, the opponent can yeah. uh, copy our moves. So for the, uh, this is sort of uh, uh, going back to ch chess example. That means that the opponent can try different uh, possibilities. He can try that move or that move or that move, keeping the position as it is. So that's a, a very good thing for the opponent. But it, it, it can... isn't it too good to be true? Because in chess, the the opponent can try all the moves at all, in in all the moves that exist. So somehow, doesn't it mean to win this game, uh, we should uh, win against all the strategies? Uh, if if the number of choices is finite at each 
move, then yeah. you are right. Then this is too good for the opponent. But or uh, because it, the, game, the case where the, where the number of choices is uh, infinite. Infinite or uncountable? Infinite. The number of choices at each turn is infinite. Ah. Oh. But then, then the opponent can can make a copy and try all of them one by one. No. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, let me give the okay, let, let, definition, yeah. and you will uh, yeah. you will then understand everything. So in um, in this uh, in this definition, uh, we do not uh, 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 need to win all the countably many infinite branches because. Uh, the number of different plays is countable. So this is called countable branching recurrence. But one can also consider an infinite, an uncountable branching recurrence where, when, uh, uh, when you need to win all the branches in the tree, uh, uncountable, uncountably many branches. And this is Japarizza's definition. And here you can try, indeed, the opponent can try all the possibilities and, uh, and we need to win all the countably many, un uncountably many uh, games. So this is for an opponent very good, too good. So that it's binary tree, either, either zero or two leaves or, or not. Uh, this so is a binary tree, right? Always binary. But, but what's the different difference between blast tree and uh, infancy tree? The tree is the same. I, I'm con I didn't understand the difference between blast and tiparidze. Well, <clears throat> uh, the difference is that. Uh, Ah, the tree has to be, um, all branches have to be finite in blast tree. It's extra condition. Uh, in in blast in blast approach, uh, we are not allowed to, con we, we do not consider all possible binary trees. So how do you say it? Uh, so R in blast, R, is it allowed to have infinite branches? Uh, so, so trees can be infinite in blast definition. So the current positions in uh, in blast definitions are the leaf of the current tree, mm -hmm. right? Then you are allowed at some point uh, to consider, say, two copies of one leaf. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you say? Little, Let's yeah, write yeah, but, it like but, that. But if you if you if you again make so you, you don't but but some somehow the the the, 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 the you, you decide that it gets a, gets a new number uh into uh, it gets a new number like one, two, say three, this is three, this is three, and this is four. Uh, and every game starts at some place here, like the I mean, gets a number, uh, and you are allowed to consider only games with a number. And say, for example, you are not allowed to consider the game which is one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So, I I do not see now I uh, how to define it correctly in a simple way, but, but the intuition I a, think is clear. What's the a, difference? A game must have a start point. But yes. it may not in, have an end point. It can be infinitely in, in, long. In blast definition, we play countably many uh, plays. In Japanese definition, we play uh, uncountably many plays. But there are also countably many start points because a start point is a place in the branch. All right. So it's a node, and there are countably many nodes in the infinite tree. All right. But in Zipari's definition, 
any branch in the tree is considered as a play. Yeah, uh, if I draw into correctly that in the blast definition games are disjoint and in Japanese they're not necessary. Games are sparse in this tree. So they are not disjoint in, in a sense, right? Right. No, uh, in blast definition, I not say. In blast definition, they are disjoint, so to say. Yeah. Uh, okay. So sorry for confusion. So I wanted to say only one thing that Japariza considers even a more harder game for the opponent. No, for for us. Uh, and that's it. Sorry for but the confusion. Uh, does it mean now will, winning uh, Japari the game just is meaning having a strategy uh, to win against any opponent strategy? So there is kind of universal opponent strategy for Japarija, just making all possible moves. Mm -hmm. So if there is even one strategy, maybe uncomputable, to win the game for the opponent, then the opponent will definitely win it. Because he can try all the possibilities. So in Japarizza games, uh, non-computable strategy for an opponent um, can be translated to the computer the strategy, try everything. Yes. Yeah. So that makes uh, things a little bit trivial, but then the apogee, uh, uh, Japarizza considers some, uh, some complication of the definition making that not that trivial, but I, I, I don't want to go to, into details here. Let, let me skip to linear logic. Yeah. I promised to say something yeah. about linear logic. I will uh, uh, open, share the slides. So, so now, now it looks like that. There are many natural operations on games, but somehow there are too many. The only thing which is well defined is negation, because it's clear what does it mean, and there is no different definitions. But for conjunctions, disjunctions, uh, paral parallelization, implication, we have a bunch of different definitions, so we don't have anything to, 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 to fix on. We, 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 we consider many different notions, and we somehow are lost uh, because there are too many. Mm -hmm. And but this is course, a small part of what Japari is considered, actually. <laughs> you, <laughs> okay. you are already lost, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, but what you say is that now we can consider, uh, we want to, if we have the separations, uh, it's interest, uh, natural to ask what are the logic of these operations? So, mm -hmm. what are the things which also have. Oh, sorry. That's not the share I wanted. Uh, mm -hmm. This one. So this is a fine logic. Uh, it's not the same as linear. Almost the same as linear. I, I will explain what's the difference. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is called a sequence when we have this sign. How do you say stopper in Russian? Uh, uh, this sign. Yeah. And then uh, some formulas with comma. Comma actually means or, parallel or. And this is an axiom, uh, uh, A or not A. And we have seen that we can win such a game, whatever the game A we have. A no, is so, here. So th this, is, this is understood as parallel, as parallel or. As parallel or. And th actually, the sign is always on the left of anything. So we can just omit it easily because we don't have anything before the sign. Yeah? Or, Say it or, again. So no, no, normally we somehow have something before the sign. Before, before yeah, the, this is the version with empty uh, empty number of premises. Yeah. So the, really, the stopper sign is not really important. We just consider a, a, a sequence. No, we can just ignore it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. the point is that um, the order 
between uh, A and not A is not important. So comma means that we can uh, exchange the order. But it's multi-set or a set? It's a multi-set. Multi multi so A comma A is different from A. Yeah. And uh, a negation of A means that uh, we consider the negation of a formula and then using the more the Morgan rules push the negation up to variables. So we consider formulas uh, constructed from variables using two kinds of or, two kinds of and, uh, and uh, using also exclamation mark and... Uh, so we, 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 we allow not only for uh, variables, but uh, we and use... This is, this is just an abbreviation, this one. Yeah. And this is may, may it means that we apply it recursively by, by the Morgan rules. Yeah, right. And one is a constant. So the game uh, represents, uh, so to say, truth. The game which is winnable by a trivial strategy. And uh, we have two axioms. Oh, so so, so there, there is just a constant. No, it's interpretation of the constant. But for now, right. it's just a constant. Not la, la, just la. a constant. Right. Yeah. And there are some rules. For example, this is a cut rule. Uh, so what does it mean? Um, so interpretation will be, if you have a computable strategy to win this one, and also a computable strategy to win this one, then we have a computable strategy to win this one. Okay, no, but let, 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 let's let, let's first look on the rules syntactically, and then then speak about semantical things. So, uh, okay, let, let's just you, you can, there you are can a lot of rules. Things. We should look at them uh, uh, one by one. So the cut is kind of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we can introduce this and and or yeah mm -hmm. and also introduce this and and or yeah so introducing uh oh they are somehow uh, uh so if we if we have a so for 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 parallel things or is just is the same as writing these two things and uh for uh, and strangely, sometimes we have gamma and delta, and sometimes when we write gamma and delta, for example, if gamma is equal to delta, we still have then, two copies of every variable. Yeah, yeah, that's important. In uh, a fine logic, it is uh, we have no uh, way to uh, produce from two copies of a one copy of a and no, and the other way around also so p p p comma p is not the same as just p yeah so for example gamma is somehow kind of of, of assumptions so if we have gamma and can use them to play a and to play b uh, uh, we can use them to play a or b using the only one copy of gamma uh, because we don't need to play in parallel, so we don't need to call the same element of gamma twice. But if we introduce parallel thing, then we need to have two copies of gamma. So that's that's what why we have this 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 uh, gamma and delta things in introducing end. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Okay. Uh, the, the question mark, it, it's a bit strange. What does it in the relation? The relation. Yeah. Wait. So uh, uh, I can explain how, how we win this one, assuming that we win this one. But what does the question mark represent? Uh, 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 a or A or A infinitely many times. But you can understand ah, okay. in different ways, as we have seen for A and A and A. Uh, so I guess the same choices are for question mark, but now it's just a, now it's just a mm, syntactic rule. Mm -hmm. But all the syntactic uh, rules are coherent with uh, the understanding we had previously. So uh, uh, 
uh, I mean blast semantic or Japarita semantic or our semantic form a model for this. So, uh, so, fine so, so uh, question mark is e, is is is, is this junction? Uh, so it's or, something... right. It's infinite or. Yeah. So so it's uh, e easy to, to 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 think. So it's kind of 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 uh, weakening in in other other type of weakening. And but what is more interesting in the last line, it's about contraction and some some strange things. Can you can you explain this? No, of course, because this is so to say uh, countably many ors and another countably many ors, uh, which are joined with a north sign. Uh, so uh, countably many plus countably many is just countably many. That's the explanation. Ah, and so, so if we need gamma in some extent, we need the same gamma. We don't need to copy gamma because it's mm -hmm. just the same, same, same uh, countable, countable things. Okay. And the last one? The last one is so, so, sort of easy, I guess. Here, uh, we need to win infinitely many A's. And we know that the, to win A's, uh, we need the opponent to win infinitely many gammas. So, uh, by the way, this means that uh, 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 this sign applied to a set means applying uh, uh, th that sign, I mean, uh, to all the um, uh, elements of gamma. Yeah. Uh, so, we can win one copy of A using, so to say, uh, infinite uh place uh, uh which are inside gamma yeah and here we have also infinite number but we can divide this infinite number into, into infi infinite, infinite number of infinite for... game, infinite number and using each portion of infinite to, to uh, win one play in a of a Okay, so now, 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 but, but, but this is this is kind of motivation. But on the purely syntactic level, the logic is defined, mm -hmm. and this is only one affine logic. Or there are like like modal logics. We have thousands of them, and one the, only one. Just as one affine logic. Uh, uh, and if we uh, skip weakening rule, we obtain the so-called linear logic. Mm -hmm. Uh, as, as, uh, and I don't know what was the idea of Gerard. Why? What was the motivation? So I don't know. He probably, have some semantics for this. Probably it's kind of logic of resources. So each variable represents a certain resource, uh, and winning a game means that you can arrange uh, resources somehow. And weakening rule means that some resources are just not used resources in a oh, there was i remember there was an explanation somehow informal so we, we have some kind of 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 uh it, it was very natural in 90s uh, that there is a product i don't know a, a milk and also there is a cheese and there is a uh, you you can have a, 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 a coupon for milk and coupon for cheese but also you can have a coupon for ex exchanging cheese for milk. And also you can have a coupon which exchanges, I don't know, meat uh, to a coupon which exchanges cheese to milk. So kind of, kind of, of logic. Of, 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 and each such coupon represents a certain formula. So, so the formulas are just A implies B is a coupon which allows you to exchange uh, a product to B products, and A and B can be also coupons for something. And so um, the the, the, the uh, conjunction is just uh, the coupon for obtaining infinitely many coupons of something, I guess. Uh, and it's the difference between, mark. Uh, so informally, the difference between a fine logic and linear logic is just in the linear logic. Everything, every resource should be used, and nothing. Uh, 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 and what you produce uh, 
you do, you do not you are not allowed to produce more than required, and you are required to use all the resources provided. But what is question marks? Uh, so, so disjunction means that you are allowed to 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 get. Uh, uh, so the question mark has no such interpretation, actually. I don't understand how one can in interpret question mark. No, but at least in, in, in conjunction, there are two ways. You can have a universal coupon, which gets you both milk and cheese. And also you can have a coupon, which gets you either milk or cheese by on your choice. Mm -hmm. And also you can have a coupon when you get A or B, just you can get either milk or cheese if you want and you say what you want and the other coupon is you come and they give you something which is could could be uh, on by their choice milk or cheese yeah right so anyway one can uh, prove easily that uh, the game semantics either of them of the three forms a model for that that means that if a formula is derivable, derivable in this logic, then whatever games we will substitute for variables, then the uh, resultant game is computably winnable by us, by the machine. And moreover, there is one strategy that wins all those games. So, uh, so in a sense, we obtain a game semantic for a fine logic. Yeah. However, by some very easy uh, reasons, it's not complete. So it's not a complete. Semantic. But do we know what? But for, for, for this semantics with coupons was was developed into a real formal semantics or not? Uh, it's yes. It's called the semantics. I mean, uh, of tasks, so to say this logic of tasks and it's also not complete but do we have some complete semantics for li for, for linear or fine logic mm. I, I don't know actually Pro probably there is some complete semantic I don't remember so for example a fine logic is, is decidable or not what is known is just kind uh, of the fine logic is not decidable I mean the fine logic is decidable. This is proved in, by uh, a Russian, by Kopelov in 90s. And yeah. the linear logic is undecidable. So undecidable, is, just really not, 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 not polynomial, not uh, but just, just undecidable. Just undecidable. Which is proved by Kanovich. So that's very, uh, very surprising. The two logics which are so close to each other one of them is decidable, and the other one is not. And how can you prove it's undecidable? What What is the Kanovich proof? I don't know. So uh, everything, uh, uh, I, I don't know how to prove any of these things. And this is according to Schertman. I asked Schertman, and he said that one of them is decidable, the other one is not. I have one more question. So the symbol one, is nowhere used in any reduction rule. Can we just drop this axiom? Which one? So Which there are two the axioms. Second axioms that one is 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 derivable. But it's I think that we can drop it. Yeah, it's a bit strange. Yeah. Yeah, it's just. I agree. It's it's very strange. And also, if we just add that A and conju all conjunctions are the same and all these junctions are the same and, and this uh, uh, question marks and exclamations mark do not change anything. We get a stronger, stronger logic somehow, yeah? Just a classical logic. I guess that we, we get a classical logic. We, are, we, are, we will obtain all the tautologies and all the tautologies. Okay, it's interesting, but it, it would be nice to understand the motivation for Girard and why it's... Um, and also there is something which is called a ludic uh, f of, of the same Girard. Uh, uh, the same Girard also 
suggested something which is called ludics, like logic of games. So it should be somehow closer to, to our topics. What is known? What is this? No idea. So there is not nothing like like Kripke models, just kind of. Uh... There are some models uh, using using. Uh, some algebra for that and using that model we can prove that some formula are not derivable uh, which uh, are valid in the game semantics so so at least one semantics exists so which which is the, the formula which is true in games but not derivable in a fine logic let's see on the next slide i guess No, but you show show this. No, not here. Mm, let me write it there on the so in the usual language this uh, A or C and B or D and here we like that and here we have again but uh, in a not a or not b and uh, not c or not b and again to this one one can verify that this is a, a classical tautology actually because if this is invalid, say this one, then one of these should be zero. For example, A is zero and C is zero. And in that case, this evaluates to one and this evaluates to one. So everything here evaluates to one and the formula is true, right? So this is a classical tautology. And so, uh, and more or less by trivial reasons this is not derivable because it's very hard to derive such a formula uh, here we have and and here we have and and derive a formula with and is we have only one rule to introduce and which looks like that gamma but also we have cuts so it's not so obvious yeah we have also cuts so assume that we don't have cut. That but you mean that cut can be eliminated or not? I don't know, actually. Probably not. Uh, anyway, without cut, it's impossible to derive it because uh, we have only one way to introduce and, which is uh, uh, the following one. Delta B gamma delta a and b and using th this only rule we can't derive this because we have we, we, we can't split anything to gamma and delta here uh, uh, one of them should be empty and mm -hmm. it's very easy to um, to win this game. We, we just have pair of variables, A and not A, and so on. And if we just mimic all the moves of the opponent in these two games, we win one of them. So whatever value R takes, either A will be true or not A will be true. Uh, either A will be won or not A will be won. 
And because this is a, a, a tautology, we will win the entire game, and that's it. Is it clear? Does it make sense? No, for, for games, I think, no, the, the argument why it's not derivable doesn't make sense. Oh, no, no, I mean, the argument why it's winnable. Yeah, we should it. check that it's a tautology, but I guess, I guess, uh, I, 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 lo I, I was lost when you explained this. But <laughs> I, I, there are some finitely many cases, so I should be uh, yeah. able to reconstruct this. Mm -hmm. A, A, and C. So, so, so definitely, uh, Girard's logic is not tailored for such um, such semantics because of this easy counter example. And this formula is true for all different game semantics. But they are still different. Uh, the logics for all three semantics are different. I don't know, actually. Pro prob pro probably this is known that they are different, but I, I don't remember. <sighs> no, it's a very interesting question about, about uh, logic, and, and it's, it would be interesting to understand that probably there is some sy sy syntactical theory of Girard logics uh, rules. Some, uh, there are some derivable rules, there are some uh, admissible rules, and maybe you can prove something that the reverse of the rules is true or whatever, and there should be some semantic for it and, and, and motivation for it. So it's, it's kind So maybe we can stop at this moment. Yeah, we, we, should, we should stop at this moment. Mm, I can stop the recording.